Let's run it back to about 1995. I'm still a young kid living in Nigeria, in love with my siblings. We were watching a VHS tape containing several recorded TV shows. And lo and behold, this show pops up. Boy Meets World. A sitcom about a young boy who deals with life whilst navigating his way through middle school, and then on to high school, and then on to college. Alongside the love of his life, the uniquely named Topanga, the title seemed rather odd to me because I'd never heard of a show with such a funny sounding name. As I got into the show over the years that followed, and then the final episode when Corey says, Boy Meets World. Now I get it. <laughs> ah, it all makes sense now. Now the first episode I saw of this show I remember it very well as it was the episode Wake Up Little Cory from Season 2, Episode 7, when Cory and Topanga are making a video for a school project based on sex. They end up staying late, editing the video together, and they end up falling asleep together. This looked very suspicious as the janitor and their head teacher Mr. Feeney walked in on them. Soon the whole school finds out and Corey, in order to fit in as one of the cool guys, runs along with it, leaving Topanga's reputation as a wholesome girl in tatters and their friendship ruined as a result. Corey does eventually come clean about what really happened on the school project and he apologises to Topanga and all is well again. Now I'm sort of jumping ahead of myself because this particular episode was from season 2 and this is where I first began watching the show. Now the show did go on for a full 7 seasons and when I saw the first season with its opening intro music I felt this looks a little too kiddy and goofy and it's not for me. I was around 14-15 at the time so my tastes in shows were no longer kiddy stuff like you know, Sesame Street. And immediately I dismissed the first season of the show. It was the second season that got me hooked and it was on in the UK on the Disney Channel as part of the Sky TV package. It was also shown on Channel 4 as part of the Saturday morning lineup and also during the summer school holidays when they would show multiple episodes during the week. There was a period when the show was in reruns from season 2 to 3 so the episodes were not always in sync and were often repeats. I eventually came around to watching the first season of the show and as it turns out, it was actually quite funny and entertaining. I was too quick to judge and I was thankfully proven wrong. The main story focuses on the show centred around the lead character Corey Matthews and how he deals with life's obstacles as a young boy. Corey was the main lead but there were other characters playing their parts in the show. His parents Amy and Alan, his little sister Megan or sisters, his teacher George Feeney, best friend Sean Hunter, his wacky older brother Eric, and as I said earlier, the love of his life, Topanga, who was a key character on the show. There were other characters as well, but we will get onto them later. As I said earlier about the show revolving around Corey, about his journey from a boy to a young man. He tries to look at life in a very unique and simplistic way, but then he realises that there is a lot that he needs to learn. His girl Topanga, who starts off as a rather weird classmate, ends up becoming his girl. She was intelligent, unique, inquisitive, insightful, caring, and drop dead gorgeous. As played by actress Daniel Fischel, she was part of that elite group of 90s teen crushes. What a time. The main ongoing story arc was the relationship between him and Topanga. It was quite the marathon of a love story, so I'm going to try to summarise this as best I can. Now it was a very unique relationship because throughout the show's run, Corey mentions how they've been together all their lives. But that wasn't necessarily spot on, because in the first season when she shows up, and immediately Corey is weirded out by her and then he often proceeded to make fun of her. She was quite a unique young girl. And as the story usually goes, all this bravado was Corey actually liking her. This relationship expands throughout the show's run as season 2 saw them get closer and closer. They even shared a kiss along the way. And by season 3, they become a proper couple. 
and then they promptly break up, date other people before inevitably ending up back together. It wasn't all clear sailing though as they had to put up with quite a few obstacles. Like when Topanga's parents are moving and she has to move along with them as she's still a young teenager. She runs away from her parents to be with Corey and a compromise is met and then she gets to stay with her auntie and stay in Philadelphia and continue her relationship with Corey after Corey's parents initially disagree. Did you hear what she said? Yeah, she said you're staying here. <laughs> After a stretch of being a happy couple together, season 5 brought about the pair's toughest obstacle yet. After spending a weekend on a ski trip, Corey meets another woman named Lauren. The two get close and they even end up kissing. But Corey decides it's Topanga that he wants to be with. Lauren did write Corey a letter expressing her feelings, which unfortunately Topanga finds and confronts Corey about it. Lauren shows up, and with Topanga's permission, Corey goes on a date with her to explore his feelings. And then it's here that he realizes it's Topanga who's the one. But unfortunately for Corey, Topanga felt betrayed, and after a tearful hug, the two break up. This unfortunately sent Corey into a downward spiral which saw him turn to alcohol and he ends up dragging his best friend Sean Hunter down with him. D-Day came in the episode season 5 episode 20 when Topanga meets a charming fellow who sweets her off her feet and it looks like the final curtain for Corey and Topanga. Every one of Corey's support group all felt that it was all over but him. He waits at the bars in the playground for her to which she shows up of course and then they finally get back together. And then they lived happily ever- oh, wait, wait, what, there's more? Okay. Okay, now normally it's the guy who proposes to the girl but Topega isn't your average girl. And just as it seems the two are going to be separated once again due to them going to different colleges, Topega proposes to Corey and he accepts, after a very long silent pause. And then the two end up eloping. As is the course of this roller coaster of a love train, the pair are yet again confronted with more obstacles, in the form of Corey's parents, especially his mom, Amy, who is dead set against this, and even puts Topanga down, who after eloping, said no to Corey as she wanted all her family to be there and his family as well. This is a mistake, and I do not support it. Why couldn't you have just gone to Yale? She shouldn't have bothered after that, really. Eventually, the parents come round, and they celebrate their engagement. I'm sorry, I can't do this. This is a mistake, and I do not support it! <laughs> Why couldn't you have just gone to Yale? <laughs> Eric doesn't count. So it's all smooth sailing from there all the way to the altar. Except we get yet another obstacle. Topanga's parents. They separated, and this stuff Topanga devastated and feeling that she and Corey could end up the same way, so she broke up with him again. As determined as ever though, Corey did everything to fix the situation, including putting her parents back together. Until it's discovered Topanga's dad actually left the mother for another woman. And it seems all is doomed and it's all coming to an end. Topanga's mum talks her around and after much soul searching, she decides she wants to be with Corey and the two end up together. And this time, they finally end up going down the aisle and end up tying the knot. Whew, that was quite a ride. So this is it, right? This is where they lived happily ever after. What do you mean there was after? What is this? Is this co Shortly after getting married, the honeymoon period is over and the newlyweds are brought crashing back down to reality when they realise they really and truly are on their own. A showdown between Corey and Alan forced the couple to take matters into their own hands, and they end up having to get a small rundown apartment as their home. 
They eventually get the house in good shape and the two begin life as a married couple. And that concludes part 1 on my take on Boy Meets World. Join me for part 2 where I discuss the remaining characters and my final thoughts on the show. I'll see you then.